Hello and welcome back to the Wasteland everybody, welcome back to Fallout New Vegas where today we're going to be taking a look at an iconic, well, any sort of gun. <laughs> this is the minigun. So the minigun is a very interesting weapon that's appeared I think in every single Fallout game as well. I think that there's a minigun in the very first one. Maybe not, maybe there's just the Gatling laser, I can't remember now. But the minigun has been an iconic Fallout weapon and just kind of an iconic weapon in gaming in general. So the minigun is a big powerful, or sort of powerful, machine gun that you can find throughout the wasteland. And the minigun is fairly rare, you don't find a whole lot of miniguns. Super mutants like to carry this around as their primary weapon, because super mutants are quite big and they can use it fairly well. Sometimes you find raiders and stuff that like using this as well, mercenaries. And you can actually buy miniguns from like the gun runners pretty easily in places like the Brotherhood as well if you want to get a minigun. For the requirements, the minigun requires 100 guns and 10 strength, so it requires maxed out skills in both if you want to have full proficiency in it. If you're going with a dedicated heavy weapons build, you're probably going to be having high strength anyway. Maybe not 10, but pretty high. And having 100 guns does mean that you have to max out the skill, so... This doesn't matter too much with a minigun because this just affects your sway and your spread of the minigun. And you don't need to be super accurate with the minigun because of how many rounds it's throwing out. It's more accuracy through volume than anything. So it might not be that big of a deal to not have 100 guns and 10 strength. This one deals 12 damage per hit, which is fairly low, but it's kind of to balance it because it has such a high rate of fire and it has 240 damage per second. So the rate of fire definitely carries it with this one. Again, accuracy through volume and damage through volume as well. This one does 12 crit damage, same as regular damage, which is fine. This thing has an extremely low crit modifier like most fully automatic weapons. This is a 0.02 times crit modifier. So hitting crits really doesn't matter with the minigun. You're not really gonna be going for that and building crits doesn't matter either. The minigun only requires 30 action points to use though, which isn't super high for a weapon that fires as many bullets as it does. It's not bad. This has one spread to it, which is uh, not bad for a full auto weapon either. The spread does get better the longer you're shooting it, so that also helps with it. This holds 240 rounds in it, weighs 25 weight, it's a very heavy weapon. Something like heavyweight can actually help here a lot by cutting it in half. And this has a lot of item health at 1200 item health, but it can break that item health really fast because of how fast you're shooting this. This is also the very first weapon we're talking about that is using the 5mm round which is one of only two weapons that uses that. It's this weapon and the Assault Carbine and that's it. So it doesn't really have much competition. I would argue it really doesn't have any competition since you're probably not gonna be carrying around both of these. You're probably just gonna be carrying around one or the other. Assault Carbine if you want something more light and handy that has a high rate of fire and Minigun if you just want the most rate of fire and something big and heavy that holds a lot of bullets. For the general pros on the minigun, this one does do really high damage per second. That is something that's really good. And it has a really good ammo type. The 5mm is actually surprisingly good in the game because it already has base armor breaking on it. We'll talk about that in a second when we get the ammo. So that's really, really nice. And it has various variations of the 5mm, which can be pretty good too. For the cons, this one can eat through ammo really quick. So if you don't have a whole lot of 5mm, maybe don't be using this and this thing is very heavy. Luckily, the ammo isn't very heavy. If you're playing on the hardcore mode, five millimeter is one of the lightest rounds in the game, so that's not such a big deal. But the minigun itself, weighing 25, is definitely heavy, and you have to fix this, even if you're using jury rigging, with other very heavy weapons too. So carrying around multiple miniguns to try to fix up your minigun isn't really the best. Weapon repair kits would be better. Or again, if you have jury rigging and you can fix it up with some of the other heavy weapons, but even then, you don't always find heavy weapons because not everybody carries them. Again, this is usually like some raiders, some mercenaries, and super mutants. For the different rounds that we have for the minigun or the 5mm, we actually have five different ones that you can load into the gun. We've got the 5mm standard rounds, which have the regular one times damage, but regular 5mm rounds also have 10 armor breaking on them by default, which is really, really good. That's really nice. It also helps these guns out a lot because they have low base damage. So against certain armored enemies, they can just eat through a whole bunch of these bullets because the bolts aren't hitting them too hard. You have the armor piercing rounds, which nerf your damage slightly by 5%. It's not a huge deal. And they give you minus 25 damage threshold, which punches through basically everything in the game. There is no creature that has more than, I think it's 18 at the most for armor or damage threshold out of anything. And that being the rad scorpions. And then you'd only have to worry about heavily armored human enemies like the Brotherhood basically being able to tank through some other rounds from this. So armor piercing rounds punch through basically everything in the game. You have the 5mm surplus rounds. You can buy these in bulk from vendors. Some vendors tend to sell a lot of them. These ones do a little bit more damage at 15% more damage. They still have the armor breaking that they normally do, but they break your gun three times faster. And they also make it so your gun is 20% less accurate. 
Accuracy might be a problem, mostly breaking your weapon fast would be the main deterrent from using surplus rounds, and usually you don't even need to use surplus for the 5mm, because most vendors sell a lot of regular 5mm rounds, so I would just say stock up on them over the surplus rounds, unless you just want to have the most amount of rounds for any of them. Then you also have the hollow point rounds. Hollow point rounds give you 75% more damage, and unlike other hollow point rounds that give the enemy three times the amount of damage threshold, this one actually only gives you two times the amount of damage threshold, which still is a lot for 5mm. You don't want to be using this against armored enemies. Things like Death Claws could just tank right through this then, and things like medium and heavily armored enemies could as well. But against light armored enemies, these are just going to shred right through them, so that's even better. And then you also have the unique rounds, which are the jacketed soft point rounds that you can make if you have the perk hand loader. Jacketed soft point rounds give you 30% more damage per shot, which is good. Still have the minus 10 damage threshold and break your gun only 50% faster. These ones can also be really nice to be loading into the gun and are generally probably the highest damaging ones besides the armor piercing ones if you're fighting anything with armor. The, the five millimeter rounds are very, very flexible. As for an overall rating for the minigun, I'd probably put this one up into very high B tier, bordering on A tier. The minigun can be surprisingly good. It's just that it's an awkward weapon just because of the way that it's made. It's very heavy. If you're playing on hardcore difficulty, you're probably going to carry around a lot of rounds, which do actually add up to some amount. So that's not way great. And fixing this can be a little bit of an issue. But if you have no issues with any of those things and also the high requirements for it, then it, it's actually a really solid weapon. It does really well against most enemy types. Uh, there is also a modded version of the minigun we should talk about too, because you can put two different mods onto the minigun, and these do change it up at least some amount. So the modified minigun can have a high speed motor. This increases the rate of fire by 25%, so you get an even higher DPS out of it, which is really good. This makes it so you can kill things even quicker than you already did, and it's really good for fighting at close to medium range where you're probably going to be using the minigun. And then you also have the dampened subframe. This makes it so you have a reduced spread from the minigun. And that does help, at least to some extent. It makes it so the minigun goes from one spread down to 0.65 spread, I believe. And that's okay. It's still not the most accurate, but it is one of the more accurate full auto weapons, which is good. And these do just kind of help the minigun out overall if you want to be using it at a little bit longer range or if you want a little bit more DPS from it. Sometimes these mods can be a little bit expensive or difficult to find. The Gunrunners can sell them. I believe Crimson Caravan can sell them. The Brotherhood can sell them as well. So you can get all those and attach it to a minigun, which makes it feel quite a bit better. These aren't massive improvements, but the rate of fire definitely helps. So I would move the minigun when it's modded out actually up into the A tier. I think it's pretty good then. There is also a unique version of the minigun that we need to talk about as well. This is the CZ-57 Avenger. And this one you can find at the very northmost part of New Vegas, basically. It's up at Devil's Throat. You have to go all the way up there and this is found at the bottom of a pit that is full of centaurs and full of radiation. There's a guy inside of a big truck in there. You go into the back of it and he's got this and he's also got reinforced combat armor on him too. So you can take both of those, which is pretty cool because the reinforced combat armor can sell for quite a lot or it can be a pretty decent uh, armor that you might want to wear. The CZ-57 Avenger is a little bit different than a regular minigun. It looks a little bit different and it functions a bit different too. This one also requires 100 guns and 10 strength to wield, so it is a very hefty gun. Again, you're going to probably want to have high requirements for using this. This does 13 damage a shot, one more damage than a regular minigun. This does 390 damage per second, so even a higher rate of fire than a regular minigun. I think it's actually even higher than the uh, modified rate of fire than the minigun too, which is nice. This one does 13 crit damage, very low. This one has an even lower crit modifier at 0.01 times crit, so you're not going to be hitting crits a whole lot with this. Well, you might because of how fast it fires, but they're not going to be super consistent. This only costs 25 action points to use in VATS, making it actually a decent heavy weapon to be using in VATS, weirdly enough. This has much less spread than a regular minigun at 0.55, so it's more accurate than even the modified minigun. And this one does only hold 120 rounds in it rather than the 240 that a regular minigun does, so you will need to be reloading it more often, and that's something I don't really like about the Avenger. I wish it held the same amount of rounds as the regular minigun. This one is more lightweight, only weighing 18 rather than 25. Heavyweight can still affect it, and if you take that, it'll cut it down to 9 weight, which is way more manageable. And this one does have even higher item health than a regular minigun at 1600 health, so it doesn't break super fast. Again, you might still run into the same issues with the minigun, though. It can be kind of a, a pain to fix these up, it could be potentially expensive, and you're going to need to get a whole bunch of rounds in it anyway. This one I wouldn't really necessarily say is any better than a regular minigun, though. So I don't think I'd put it any higher than like the modified minigun. I'd still think I'd keep it into A tier. It's a very solid heavy weapon. And if you want to use it, by all means, go for it. 
your only real downside is going to be like finding ammo and I guess the, the magazine size for the CZ-75. We should also talk about some perks that can help with this and I've alluded to one at least a couple of times throughout this and that is heavyweight. Heavyweight does help quite a bit. It cuts the weight of these weapons down in half. So instead of 25 weight with the regular minigun, it would go to 12 and a half weight and the CZ would go from 18 to 9 weight. That does make them both more manageable. Pack rat could also be very useful because even though the five millimeter rounds don't weigh very much, cutting them in half means that you could carry twice as many rounds as you otherwise would. So that's pretty nice. And you could also potentially go with the perk weapons handling with this too, if you don't have enough strength. You may end up having enough strength though, because technically you only need to get to seven strength in New Vegas to actually have up to 10, since you can get the reinforced spine from Old World Blues and you can get the strength implant from the doctor. So that would take you up to 10 naturally. But if you don't have that, or if you have even lower strength, weapons handling could give you another plus two to it. So would I recommend the minigun? Sure, if you have the ammo and you're going to the heavy weapons build, why not? If you're not going with that and you're going with more of a lightweight build, probably not. It's just going to weigh you down a lot. I don't think you want to be carrying it around with you. I don't think it would fit with most builds, but it can be a very fun gun to use. Today, we're going to be taking a look at one of the weirdest guns in any game ever, I think. We're going to be taking a look at the K9000 Cybernetic Dog Gun, which is a strange weapon. And we're also going to be taking a look at its unique version, Fido. So the K9000 gun is going to be one of the guns that you find in Old Blues. It's sort of a unique weapon, but not really, because you can have multiple of these. You can actually have multiple of the unique versions too, which makes it, I guess, less rare overall too. So the K9000 gun is given to you at the very start of Old World Blues. It is your main gun, at least the gun that they give you, because Old World Blues doesn't really have a whole lot of guns. It's mostly known for energy weapons, and this is a gun that you can actually use there. These do use different ammos though. The K9000 uses the 357 round. Fido uses the 44 round. So ammo types are gonna be a little bit different between these. For the basic stats, the K9000 gun requires 75 guns and eight strength. A lot of strength, a lot of guns to use this effectively. This one does 26 damage per shot, which is fairly decent. It's not one of the highest 357 guns, but it is the only full auto version of it. So it kind of makes sense to have a little bit lower damage. This one does 182 damage per second, so that's quite high. Has 13 crit damage. Weirdly enough, the crit damage is actually cut in half from its regular damage. I don't know why that is. Maybe just because it's a full auto gun like this. This one has a low crit chance though, like most full auto guns, at 0.06 times. So you're not going to be hitting crits with it super often. This only costs 27 action points though. Weirdly enough, it's actually pretty decent in a VATS build. Both these weapons kind of are, so that's cool. This holds 50 rounds in it. This has a 1.35 spread, so it isn't very accurate, especially at longer ranges. The spread kind of goes all over the place. Also, it seems like bullets sometimes just don't render in. I don't know if that's actually bullets not rendering in or just you can't see them flying towards the enemy. For whatever reason, that seemed to happen to me quite a bit whenever I've been using this weapon. This weapon weighs 27 weight, so it is very heavy, although you can cut it in half with heavy weight because it is over 10 weight, so that's kind of nice. And this has 500 item health, which is kind of okay. Full auto weapons tend to break through their uh, health pretty quick, but 500 is usually enough, especially for something like this that's shooting 357, where you may not be having as many bullets as something like a minigun or a light machine gun, where it's just not as common. For the general pros of the K9000, this one does have good ammo. 357 rounds are really good, 44 rounds are really good too, so good ammo all the way around. This one has good DPS as you would hope for for a big weapon like this that's full auto. And this is a very unique weapon. You could count that as a pro or a con depending on what you consider uh, unique. Because this weapon does look weird. It's got a dog brain in it, it's got a dog sticker on it, it's got ears that move. It, it, it growls. That's another weird thing about this gun is that it growls if there's enemies nearby and that can kind of throw you off. It always throws me off whenever I actually have this weapon equipped. So yeah, pros or cons there with how weird it is. Uh, for the major con though, this one is heavy. 27 weight is quite a bit and it gets even heavier if you're playing on the hardcore difficulty and you need to carry around a lot of ammo, which you probably will for most full auto weapons. And even though 357 and 44 aren't the heaviest round in the game, they are still not necessarily the lightest round either. There isn't really any perks that directly help with these weapons. So the only two perks that I would kind of recommend if you want to be taking these would be like heavyweight to cut its weight in half. 27 weight is pretty heavy. You can drop it down to 13 and a half. That's still a little bit heavy, but it's not as bad. And then pack rat if you're playing on the hardcore difficulty so that you can cut all of your ammo's weight in half. That does help out quite a bit. Other than that, there's no designated perk that actually helps out with this like cowboy or grunt. Although I guess grunt could because they were trying to make this into like a 
I assume military weapon, at the very least maybe a police weapon or something, I'm not entirely sure, so... Maybe in some other version of Fallout, or in a modded version of Fallout, Grunt would work for this. Let's talk about the different ammos too that go to this. For the 357, we have the standard 357 rounds. These ones deal regular damage, they don't have any armor breaking. They're just very standard rounds. You've got the hollow point rounds, which make it so you get more damage, but enemies get more armor. So they're not good against armored enemies, but they are good against light armored enemies or non-armored enemies. Then you have the 38 special rounds. These ones you can usually buy in bulk and they make it so your gun breaks slower, but you also do less damage. So kind of a trade off there. And then you also have the jacketed flat points, which these ones are just a straight upgrade to your weapon. And if you have hand loader, you probably want to change all of your regular rounds into these because these ones give you more damage, they also punch through armor, and they make your gun more accurate, and they come with no downside. So they are fantastic, they're really, really good. For a basic rating for the K9000 gun on my tier list, I think I'd put the regular one into B tier. It's an overall okay weapon, it always feels kind of awkward to me, but if I have an excess of 38 special or 357 rounds, I will take something like this just to empty them out, and I've never really been dissatisfied with this weapon. I usually don't take it over something like the Cowboy Repeater or something like Lucky, but even so, I would say that this weapon is the best of those weapons if I'm taking it to a multi-fight or if I'm fighting multiple enemies in quick succession. That one is probably the best one, even though the Cowboy Repeater and Lucky I do tend to lean towards more often because they're just kind of more handy and light to carry around. There is a modded version of the K9000 as well that we need to talk about. The K9000 gets two mods. You do need to kind of do a quest for these, although you could get them before or I guess during the quest, whichever works for you. And then you buy these from the sink. The sink is actually the only vendor that will sell these. They'll also be the only vendor that will sell the LAER parts too. So the K9000 gets the Mentat Chow and they get the Wrestle Royal. The Mentat Chow increases your rate of fire by 40%, so you get even more DPS and it makes it so it shoots really fast. <laughs> it's kind of surprising whenever I throw this on as how fast it shoots compared to the regular version. The Wrestle Royal, getting a little bit tongue tied here, gives you two more damage. Two more damage is okay. Going from 26 damage to 28 damage is pretty good for a full auto weapon. The other part, the, the Mentat Chow is going to be the bigger buff though. 40% increased rate of fire is really good for a full auto weapon. And it makes so your DPS shoots up quite a bit, which is awesome. This one I would just say is a straight upgrade to the regular K9000. And I would put this one a tier higher up into A tier. It's a pretty decent weapon overall that kind of does well at close to medium range. Kind of what you would want for this. Let's talk about the unique version now. This is Fido. Fido looks different and, well, kind of functions different. It's also one of the few weapons that changes caliber, so instead of shooting 357, this one shoots 44 Magnum. Fido also is red in color, it also has a red scope. These guns do have scopes if you ADS with them, which is kind of weird. They're very awkward to be using as a scope, but they do have it. You also have like a bulldog picture on this one too, which is kind of cool. And the way that you make Fido is that you need to find a schematic. Once you have the schematic, you can go to a workbench and then you can convert any of your K9000 guns into Fido. So that's why you can have multiple Fidos or you can have multiple K9000 guns or both. It's kind of weird that you can do that with unique weapons, but there you go, you can. You can do that with a couple other ones too, I guess, with like super heated knives, super heated satellite fists, because otherwise they're just kind of common weapons. Fido requires 85 guns and 9 strength. This is one of those weird ones in Old World Blues where it requires a weird amount of guns. 9 strength is very high though. This one does 36 damage per shot, which is pretty good. 252 damage per second, also quite good. This one follows the trend of the K9000 gun and having half of its crit damage as opposed to its regular damage, so 18 crit damage. Still not sure why they did that. The same crit modifier at 0.06. And this one requires one more action point to use in VATS, so 28, which still makes it pretty good to be using in VATS. This one holds 50 rounds in it as well. This one has more spread at 1.5, surprisingly. I don't know why it actually has more spread than the regular K9000 gun. I guess because it's more powerful, so it's gonna bounce around more. This one still weighs 27 weight, and it has 500 item health. You do also have different ammo since this one does fire the 44 Magnum. So you have the regular 44, you've got the hollow point rounds, which work the same way as the 357 rounds. Uh, or at least the hollow point rounds that the 337 has. This one also has 44 special rounds, which work basically the same way as the 38 special do. So you find them it's just gonna break your gun slower, but you'll do less damage. And then you have the semi wad cutter rounds, which make it so you also do more damage and you can punch through armor. But these ones do break your gun substantially faster. So you may not want to be using these because they do break it actually pretty quick. You do actually have a bonus with the semi wad cutter rounds for the 44 though, because you don't need the hand loader perk in order to get them. You can go up to North New Vegas and then talk to a guy named Jules 
If you talk to him up there and pass a skill check, then he will give you the recipe and you can make this at any reloading bench that you would like to. That is pretty cool since you don't need the perk, but honestly, I don't really use those rounds in this gun. I'd rather use those rounds in like my trail carbine or in my 44 Magnum. I don't think Fido is the best just because it breaks so fast. Fido, I actually wouldn't say is any real better than the modified version of the K9000, but it does fire a completely different round. So that is kind of useful, especially if you want to take both these and you find yourself getting an excessive amount of 357 or 44 Magnum. So I'd also put Fido up into A tier. I think it is a pretty decent weapon overall. Would I recommend using the K9000 guns in Fido? Maybe? I don't use them very often, honestly. They're kind of heavy, they're kind of awkward, and they're using bullets that I usually use in other weapons. But if you have an excess amount of those, then they can be pretty decent. They're very weird guns, they're very unique guns. So if you wanted to have a dog gun that growls at people and that you can look at through the scope, and it also has ears, and it also has a dog brain in it, I don't think any other game is going to have all that combination for you, so at least it has that very specific niche for that, like, one guy that really wanted that. <laughs> Tell me your thoughts on the K9000 and Fido down in the comments below. I would love to hear them. I honestly really would for this particular <laughs> weapon, more so than most of the other weapons we've talked about, because this is such a strange and bizarre weapon. Today we're going to be taking a look at the shoulder-mounted machine gun from the Divide. This is one of the, I guess, kind of unique weapons from the Divide, although there is multiple of them, but it is still uh, an interesting weapon that you can't find anywhere else outside of the Divide. It's also one of those weird weapons that actually doesn't have anything that you can fix it with, similar to like the hollow rifle. So if you do want to fix up the shoulder mounted machine gun, you either need to find other shoulder mounted machine guns or you need to find somebody fixing this, which you could in the divide pretty easily, or you need to find weapon repair kits in order to fix this. Luckily, you can go to the divide really early on and potentially find one of these. Some of the marked men have them, so you probably have to fight one of the marked men, one of the named marked men that have these in order to get one. But they can be a pretty decent weapon because they're a very interesting weapon in that they take the 10 millimeter round which not a whole lot of guns actually use that. It's this one, the submachine gun, which we talked about last time, and the 10 millimeter pistol. So the shoulder mounted machine gun requires 75 guns and seven strength to wield. It is a really big gun. It kind of makes sense that it would have high strength requirements. It's got the same animations and very similar to like the missile launcher in terms of uh, looks overall and how your person handles it. And just like the missile launcher, it doesn't really draw that fast. So kind of keep that in mind. This is usually you already have it out and you're trying to fight stuff. This one does 30 damage per shot, which is quite high. That's the highest out of any of the 10 millimeter weapons in all of New Vegas, so that's pretty cool. This one does 210 damage per second, which gives it pretty high damage per second. Not as high as like the 10 millimeter submachine gun, at least sleepy time, but more than something like the 10 millimeter pistol, and it's still pretty competent towards other uh, big weapons. This one does 20 crit damage, weirdly enough. It actually does less crit damage than it has base damage, but even weirder than that, it actually doesn't have a crit modifier, which is bizarre, at least on the wiki. I think this one does actually have a crit modifier on it, and you can still hit crits. I don't know what the exact amount is. I'm assuming it's zero point something, and the wiki is just off by saying it's zero times because I have seen crits popping up when I've been shooting this thing. So it, it can't just be zero. It's not like some of the explosive weapons that actually don't do any damage on this. It seems to do extra damage. I'm not, I'm just not exactly sure what the exact amount is. This costs 30 action points to use in VATS, making it not so bad for a VATS weapon, weirdly enough. Usually the big weapons are not great for VATS because they cost a lot, but this one's actually okay in VATS. This one has 0.9 spread, so it's actually fairly accurate for a full auto weapon. That's more accurate than most of the submachine guns and some of the like full auto weapons. This holds a 60 round magazine in it by default, although that can be increased with one of its mods, increasing its magazine even further, but 60 rounds is still pretty good. This weighs 17 weight, which is kind of an odd weight, but that can be affected by the heavyweight perk, so you could cut this in half, which would be pretty useful. You can get it down to eight and a half weight. Wouldn't be as heavy then. And this one has 800 item health, which is fantastic because that means it's not going to break super fast. And we've already explained why it breaking could be a problem because you have to either find more of these or you have to find somebody that can fix this or you have to fix it with weapon repair kits. Even if you have jury rigging, you can't fix this with other large weapons like mini guns for some odd reason. But 800 health does go quite a ways, especially since this isn't the fastest shooting full auto weapon in the game. It's still fairly fast shooting. It's just not like mini gun rate of fire or anything like that. For the general pros of the shoulder mounted machine gun, this one does do pretty good damage per second, and it's pretty good so long as you're not fighting heavily armored enemies. 
even if you are fighting heavily armored enemies, as long as you're using the standard 10 millimeter rounds, you can still do at least a decent amount of damage and damage per second to them. But then with its unique rounds, not so much because that just has hollow points and the jacketed hollow points. So heavily armored enemies can tank through a decent amount of this. But light, medium armored enemies, you can still beat up pretty, pretty easily with this. It also has very common ammo, which is fantastic. 10 millimeters, is not super hard to get. You can buy quite a lot of it from vendors, and basically every vendor sells some amount of 10 millimeters, so that's fantastic. It's not too hard to stock up on. The major con to this weapon, though, is that it is just heavy. It's a heavy weapon, and you do have to go out of your way to get it from the divide. And we've already talked about the repair issues as well. So it's got a couple of problems with it, but nothing that's particularly terrible about the weapon. I go back and forth on this weapon actually quite a lot because sometimes I use it and it feels fantastic and other times I use it and I feel like I'm not hitting anything. And I don't know if that's actually a bug that's in the game where sometimes it might just be like eating my rounds and I'm just not seeing them. But other times I can just mow through just about anything with the shoulder mounted machine gun. So it, it kind of goes back and forth for me. There are no like major perks that actually help with the shoulder mounted machine gun. There are some ones that do help with uh, just it being a heavy weapon in general. Pack rat can be useful just because then it will cut down on the overall weight of the ammo. 10 millimeter is not the most heavy ammo in the game though. So that's not always a necessity, but it is just a nice quality of life thing. And then we've talked about heavyweight, which can cut its weight in half. So you go down to eight and a half weight, which is more manageable. So that's pretty nice. For an overall rating for the shoulder mounted machine gun, I think I would put it up into B tier. I think it's pretty decent at just about everything, so long as you're not fighting heavily armored enemies, in which case I would want something like the minigun over this, since I can just cut through the armor then, especially if I have armor piercing rounds in it. Now, there's a modded version of this, because you can put three mods onto this weapon. You do need to buy all three of these in the Divide, and they are going to be very expensive. The Divide's upgrades are incredibly expensive. Even with maxed out barter, they're still usually like twelve to 13000 a piece for both this weapon and like the red glare, so if you want both, you're spending like 70,000, 80,000 caps on it minimum if you want them, which you may already have by the time you're actually getting to the divide because you can earn a lot of money in New Vegas, especially if you wanted to just like snag a bunch of the gold bars from Sierra Madre and then just bring them over because that will basically pay for everything. Anyway, the three upgrades that you can get are a mechanical upgrade. This one increases your uh, accuracy. So you go from 0.9 spread to 0.7 spread. That's even better. That actually makes it a pretty accurate full auto weapon. It's as accurate as the 44 Magnum then, funny enough. So it's not terrible at range. It can actually hit things at somewhat long range too. You have a recoil compensator, uh, which that's actually the spread, sorry. The mechanical upgrade is increasing the item's health. I got those two mixed up. Increasing the uh, item's health goes up by 25%. So you go from 800 health all the way up to 1000 health. That's pretty good too. Full auto weapons love extra item health. That way you're not breaking them as fast, especially this weapon. And then you can also have an extended mag on this, which increases the overall magazine size from 60 to 75. It's not a massive upgrade in terms of mag size, and you probably won't notice that much compared to the other two options, but it's still a nice bonus to the weapon. And with all these on it, I would honestly just bump the shoulder mounted machine gun up another tier, up into like A tier. I think it's a solid enough weapon, even though it can struggle against heavily armored enemies. So long as you're not using it against those, then you at least have something to throw your 10 millimeter at, which can be pretty good. And sometimes this weapon can really shine, like I said. Other times it gets kind of wonky for me. I, I don't know. Tell me your thoughts on the shoulder mounted machine gun in the comments below. I'd love to hear them. Today we're going to be taking a look at the light machine gun in Fallout New Vegas. This one has been requested quite a bit. This one is a really cool weapon. And this one is generally going to be a late game weapon that you get in the game because there's not really a whole lot of light machine guns. Enemies like never really have this. Super mutants can carry it at high levels. I think they're the only enemy type that can actually carry around the light machine guns. I don't think I've seen this on anybody else. And there is at least one location that I know of where you can get a light machine gun. However, that is in the quarry with the death claws and it's right next to the mother death claw. So good luck getting that early on if you want to try to grab it. If you're going to be trying to fight the death claws, that is very, very difficult. But you can get a light machine gun out of that, which is pretty cool. So the light machine gun requires 100 guns to use and 8 strength. It is a very hefty weapon, as you would kind of expect for a weapon like this. This one does 21 damage per shot, which is fairly high for a 5.56 gun. That's not bad at all. That's similar to other rifles that shoot the same round as this, like the service rifle. This one does a massive 252 damage per second. That can be up to even more depending on the ammo type and the perks that you have. So DPS is where this thing really shines, which is fantastic. This one does 21 crit damage on hit, same as its regular damage, pretty normal. 
has a low crit chance like most of these automatic weapons at 0.06. Not too surprising there. Basically all the automatic weapons are like this with a few exceptions. Then this one only costs 18 action points for some odd reason. The light machine gun is surprisingly good in a VATS build. I don't know why that is, but it is. So if you want to be using a VATS build, try this one out. It's really, really strong for a VATS build. This one has a 1.5 spread, which is actually not too bad for a full auto weapon like this. It's still fairly accurate, and this can actually be more accurate if you want to load the match rounds in. We'll talk about that when we get to ammo. This has a 90 round magazine capacity, however that can be increased with an extended magazine going up to 200 rounds, which is an extreme amount of bullets for this thing, and makes it so the sustained fire is really crazy with it. This weighs 15 weight, so fairly heavy, but not the most heavy weapon in the game. And this has a really high item health at 800, so it doesn't break super fast either, which is all around really good. For the general pros of the light machine gun, this one does have really high damage per second as you would absolutely hope that it would. It has a great ammo type, the 5.56 round is one of the most versatile rounds in the entire game, if not the most versatile round in the entire game. And it also has a really large magazine which makes it so the sustained fire from this thing is pretty crazy. It's also insanely good against fast moving targets like Kazdors because you can just spray this right at them and you'll rip them right apart like a submachine gun, but this thing holds way more rounds than any of the submachine guns. Uh, even the fully modded out submachine guns don't come close to this, even with the base magazine, let alone with the giant extended magazine that it gets. The major con to this one, and really the only con, is that it's rare. I guess you could also say it's kind of heavy, 15 weight is fairly heavy, and if you're playing on the hardcore difficulty you're going to want to carry around a lot of bullets, so that does make it kind of heavy, but it's not the most heavy gun in the game. The rarity is going to be the main con against this, where you're probably going to have to just buy this weapon from like the gunrunners, and that's not such a big deal, but it won't be showing up right away at the gunrunners, you will need to wait until you're like level 20 or 30 whenever the heck these show up at the gunrunners. This does have quite a few perks that help it though too, Grunt actually helps this one, so you get more damage with it, which makes this gun absolutely insane with Grunt. It's similar to like the 45 SMG or All-American that are already really strong guns or the Survivalist Rifle. All of these that are already really strong guns that get even stronger thanks to that, so that's really good. Heavy weight does affect this since it's over 10 weight, so you can cut this in half and it goes down to 7.5 weight. That's pretty cool. Pack rat for just carrying around more ammo if you're playing on the hardcore difficulty. If you're not, you don't have to worry about that. And Vats perks really help out with this too if you want to go with Math Wrath, Action Boy, Action Girl. They're really strong for this particular weapon too. As for ammos, you actually have quite a few with the light machine gun. You have the standard 5.56 round. These ones are just regular damage and the most common round that you're maybe going to find for these. 5.56 is fairly common. Most vendors sell it in high quantities, so you can buy a lot of it. You have the 223. 223 you can buy in the miscellaneous section, or sometimes you can just buy it in the ammo section from vendors. You can buy it in bulk too. This does less damage to both the target and to the gun. That's pretty good. You have armor piercing rounds. These ones are really, really strong with the light machine gun since you can actually stockpile a lot of them. They punch through 15 armor and they only nerf your damage slightly. Really good against most enemies. You have the hollow point rounds, give you extra damage, but give the enemy extra armor. Really good against soft targets, not the best against heavy targets. Surplus rounds, which you can buy in bulk as well. These ones give you more damage, but they break your weapon much faster. I really wouldn't recommend that you load service rounds into the light machine gun. It'll break it really, really fast, and that's just not as good. Plus, by the time you're getting to the light machine gun, you probably won't need to be buying surplus rounds because you can just buy the regular rounds in such large quantities. And then you have the match rounds. You can make this with the hand loader perk. This makes it so you get a little bit more damage and your gun is more accurate. That's pretty good. That's actually really helpful for the light machine gun since it's not the most accurate weapon and the accuracy buff does actually help this quite a bit. For an overall rating on my tier list for the light machine gun, I'd probably put this one right up into S tier. It's really good at its job. It's really good for a light machine gun role. It does really well in most jobs. It's exactly what you would want for a light machine gun. It's high sustain fire. It's fairly common ammo, actually quite common ammo. It rips through just about everything. Your only real downside is that it's rare and repairing it could be a little bit of an issue if you don't have like weapon repair kits or jury rigging. If you have either of those, it's not such a big deal though. The modified version of this, I don't think really separates it that much from the regular light machine gun. It's just that you have more sustained fire. So it would just stay in S tier. So I'm not gonna put another graphic up there because the regular version is good, the upgraded version is just slightly better than it, so that's really cool. Even the 90 rounds in the gun does take a while to go through, and if you're fighting things like Kazdors, you'll probably be able to mow through all of them before you would need to reload anyway. With 
few exceptions in certain areas, or if you have like what I'm doing in the background where you have like 10 times the amount of enemy spawns, then the 200 rounds is actually quite impactful and even better for a weapon like this, so that's pretty awesome. So would I recommend the light machine gun? Yeah, absolutely. It's really cool. It's really funny, even if you're not going to the guns build. I love taking this on like a melee or an unarmed build and just spraying it at enemies until I can get close and then beat them up with whatever I'm using. Today we're going to be taking a look at a very iconic Fallout weapon at least appeared in two of the Fallout games. This is the Bowser, and this one is a very bizarre weapon. So the Bowser is supposed to be a assault rifle, sniper rifle, light machine gun thing? That's all kind of packaged into one, well, bulky package, as it would seem. This is a unique weapon. There is only one of these. It's a one-of-a-kind weapon. However, you can just buy this from the gun runners. This is a weapon that has come back from Fallout 2, in Fallout 2, I would say that the Bowser is much better. In Fallout New Vegas, it's in a very awkward spot as to what it's kind of useful for, as I don't find it as useful as other weapons that fill a similar niche to it. But let's talk about its stats and kind of go over the general pros and cons of this weapon. So the Bowser requires 100 guns in order to wield and 8 strength. So it is a very hefty weapon. It's going to require a lot of investment, both in strength and in guns, so that you don't have a lot of sway when shooting this. The Bowser does 19 damage per shot, which is decent for a 5.56 gun. That's not like unheard of or anything. That's still pretty good damage. Has 285 damage per second, which is quite good. The rate of fire is nice on the Bowser, although the magazine size is a little bit awkward. We'll talk about that here in just one second. This does 19 crit damage, which is normal, same as its regular damage. Has a 0.05 times crit modifier, which is also pretty normal for a fully automatic weapon. Full auto weapons just in general don't have high crit chances, so the Bowser is no exception to that. This one only costs 18 action points, making it actually a pretty tempting option to be using in VATS. However, there are some other 5.56 guns that you might want to be using in VATS that we'll talk about here in a second. This has surprisingly low spread for a full auto weapon at just 0 0.75. That's not too bad. That's better than most submachine guns. Actually, I think it might be better than all the submachine guns. And it's better than most of the other fully automatic weapons outside of like the laser fully automatic weapons, which are just extremely accurate. This one holds 30 rounds in it, which is a little bit awkward for a full auto light machine gun sniper thing that it's trying to be. This weighs 15 weight, so it is kind of hefty, but not super heavy. And this has 800 item health, which is pretty good. It makes it so the Bowser does not break that fast. Now, since this is a unique weapon, you can still fix this with light machine guns so long as you have jury rigging, I believe. You might not need jury rigging if you have light machine guns. I'm not entirely sure. Maybe there's a few other heavy guns that you can fix this with. I don't think you can fix it with mini guns. Um, so you might just be having to repair this with weapon repair kits or get somebody to fix this for you. For the general pros of the Bowser, this one has really good ammo. The 5.56 round is really, really good. It has a lot of variants and it works for basically any sort of situation. And it has really good DPS. The DPS from the Bowser is pretty cool. For the general cons of the Bowser though, this one is expensive. You have to buy it from the Gunner's Arsenal. You can't get it any other way. And it is basically the max price weapon. Uh, along with a couple others like the two-step goodbye and Esther and them so it is going to be very expensive for you to get you can get it potentially pretty early on though if you do want to go out of your way to make that amount of money like if you want to get all the snow globes and get the casinos then you'll probably have enough cash to buy this right away that could be an option or maybe you're just really into caravan and you can get a lot of money that way too this is a very strange weapon which is kind of a con kind of a pro it depends on how you want to look at it if you like the aesthetic and you like the feel of it then by all means use it if you don't like it then it's probably not gonna feel a whole lot better to you because this is a little bit of a strange weapon it is a fully automatic weapon that has a scope that's a little bit difficult to control that's not amazing at long range it's not terrible at long range either it's better at close and medium range, and hip firing it feels fine as well. It's just a very strange weapon overall though. And this weapon is a little bit heavy. At 15 weight, it does kind of weigh you down. However, it is heavy enough for heavyweight to cut it in half, and we'll talk about that in perks right now. The main perks that are gonna help with the Bowser are something like heavyweight, so you can cut it in half, so it goes from 15 weight to seven and a half weight, which is fine. And you can also stack VATS perks with this. So if you want to go with like Mathrath or Action Boy slash Action Girl, you can get a lot of value that way, especially if you're using this in a VATS build. Let's talk about the ammos that we have for the Bowser 2, and then we'll kind of go over why this weapon fits in such a weird spot or doesn't really fit in a spot as well as other weapons. So for the ammos, you have the standard 5.56 round, which does regular damage. It's a pretty good round. It's very common. You can buy it from basically any vendor. 
most vendors have a really big supply of it too, so that's really cool. You have the 223 that you can also load into this. 223 you can buy in bulk or you can buy individual rounds from vendors. This one does slightly less damage. It does 10% less damage than the 556, but it breaks your weapon 20% slower. So this can actually be a pretty tempting option for full auto weapons, especially rare weapons like this that you can't fix easily, usually, unless you have like jury rigging or weapon repair kits. You have the armor piercing rounds. These do 5% less damage, but punch through 15 armor. This is really good for basically any weapon. You have the hollow point rounds, which give you 75% more damage, but they give the enemy three times the amount of armor. So good against non-armored enemies, bad against heavy armored enemies. Then you've got the surplus rounds, which you can buy in bulk from vendors. You can only buy this in bulk in the miscellaneous section. I don't think you could just buy surplus rounds in their ammo section. This one gives you 15% more damage, but it does break your weapon three times faster. I wouldn't really recommend that you put this in a full auto weapon like that. The surplus rounds are generally better for slower shooting weapons that you can fix easy. Something like the Varmint Rifle is a really good use of the surplus rounds. The bows are not so much, unless it's the only thing you have and by all means go go crazy with it. And then you also have the match rounds. Match rounds also give you 15% more damage and they make your weapon 35% more accurate which is pretty cool. That actually helps out with the Bowser a decent amount since it is full auto. For other 5.56 weapons, it might not matter that much. Again, like the Varmint Rifle, that's already very accurate, but for this, it's actually a pretty good option. You do need to have the hand loader perk in order to get those, but you can make them yourself, so that's pretty cool. For an overall rating for the Bowser, I think I would actually put this thing into B tier, and I'll explain why in just a second, because it is actually a decent weapon. You can get a lot of value out of it. it at the end of the day, it is a full auto 5.56 weapon, so it's not gonna be a bad option really for most builds maybe if you're not going to the high strength build or you're not going to the guns build you're probably not gonna even bother with this but for a guns build you might want to take something like this my main issues with the bowser are that it kind of gets out competed by a couple other weapons mostly the light machine gun and the marksman rifle the marksman rifle has similar stats to this but it has better damage per shot it's more accurate, it has better action point cost, at least the unique one with All-American. It's got a similar magazine, it weighs less. It's kind of all around just sort of better than this one, and I don't really see a point in taking this over something like a Marksman Rifle in most builds, unless you just really like the Bowser it's, itself, in which case go for it. And the Light Machine Gun is just kind of better than this because the Light Machine Gun is very similar to this, but has much more sustained fire with its much larger magazine. With the Bowser only holding 30 rounds compared to the Light Machine Gun's 90 rounds by default and 200 rounds if you take the larger mag with it. Again, I don't think the Bowser is a bad weapon, and I could understand people saying it being A tier or so, which is fair because those other two weapons are really, really strong and two of the best weapons in the game, especially two of the best um, 5.56 weapons. This one, I feel, just falls a little bit short of those two. And that's why I would put it like into B tier. If you want to go with it and you want to run with it, it, it'll it serve you just fine. You can go through the entire game on any difficulty with it. Again, at the end of the day, it is a 5.56 weapon that is full auto. That kind of by default is already really, really good. So tell me your thoughts on the Bowser down in the comments below. I'd love to hear that because this weapon is very strange. I know a lot of people really liked it in Fallout 2, if you ever played Fallout 2. It is a really good gun then. Because in Fallout 2, it doesn't really matter how janky or awkward the weapon is, since you're not actually in first person shooting it. It's just attached to your character and then you just go through the process of setting up how you want to fight with it. In which case then you can make basically anything work in that game and you're more just looking at the stats itself more so than like the, the feel of the weapon. In New Vegas, I feel like it doesn't feel as good. But that's just because there's other weapons that kind of do its job a bit better. So again, tell me your thoughts. I'd love to hear them. I hope you guys have a great rest of your day. And I'll talk to you next time. Bye-bye.